Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your May 16th to the 31st, 2024 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. It gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm, which gets it out to more people. So thank you so very much for doing so. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Oh, guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So we are crowned here, Capricorn, with the Wheel of Fortune. And I love that. I love that for you. That is fantastic. The, the Wheel of Fortune is change. We're going to see that our fortune is changing. Things are moving forward. And because the Wheel of Fortune is you know, in the upright position, things are, are changing for the better, or we feel like we we have upward momentum coming at us. So that's going to be a very good thing. That's going to be a very exciting thing for us. And so I'm really, really, really excited for you guys. So let's see here. We then have the page of swords. So we're going to be an unwilling student. We're going to be learning things. A lot of knowledge is going to be coming at us. Do we want to learn it? No. Do we feel like it's fair? No, we don't. It's like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? We can also see here what you see the dandelion fluff, you know, flying out. He'd be like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want, I don't want weeds, right? I don't want more dandelion weeds, you know, growing everywhere. So just being aware of this during this time is going to be an important thing. We can think, oh my gosh, now what? Now what's going on? Just hit the the solar plexus chakra. So do be aware of that. Listen to your gut, but there can also be a sense of like having an upset tummy or like, you know, feeling like my gut instinct is off with certain things. So stepping back, also embracing your inner child with connecting with your voice, connecting with like, I don't make mistakes. I not, not, I don't make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but I'm not a mess up. I'm not a failure. You know, there's power, there's beauty to me. And I am embracing that. That is going to be a very, very, very important thing. It moves us then to the six of cups reversed. And the six of cups reversed is again, it's that, it's that inner child coming forward. It's, it's our childhood coming forward. And it's not necessarily in the best way. It is, you know, well, I didn't do that right. Or I wish I could have changed that. Or I wish this could have been different. So looking at things during this time, we're, we're going to see a change in our fortune, but we're going to be looking backwards and being like, well, I can't change the past. And fortunately or unfortunately, we can't. So here, well, it's probably fortunately because we never stop. We never get out of like day one, right? So here with the Six of Cups, it, it's looking at things and it's knowing that, yeah, we can be super, it's not nostalgic. It's like the past can come and bite us in the tush. So just being aware of that during this time with the Six of Cups is going to be very important. We don't need to be bit in the tuchus. Like we don't need that energy going on here. So just being aware of that is going to be an important thing. It moves us then to judgment. We judge ourselves really, really harshly. And that is going to be something that we're fighting against, but we judged ourselves harshly from a really young age. It's kind of like that Saturn energy. Perfect is the only thing I'm asking of you. So just be aware of that. And we are ruled by Saturn. So, yeah. Oh, then we have the King of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So if you're born on the cusp with Sagittarius, if you have Fire Sign Energy in your life, this is a bit of a temper coming through. So we can be hot-headed. We can be, you know, a bit like, you know, it's my way or the highway type of energy. So being aware of that is going to be a very important thing. Also a very empowering thing during this time. We can be dealing with people who it's the motto of might equals right, right? I'll bully you into, you know, going after what I want doing things that I want you to do type of deal. So just being mindful about that during this time. And then we have the death card. Now I know all these cards here are reversed, but it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It is telling us our journey, what to be aware of. I'm just going to fix the alignment here for just a minute. So bear with me. Oh, okay. So here with the death card, this is Scorpio energy. So are we going to have the best relationship with a Scorpio? No, we're not. But the death card is one of the most positive cards in the deck, even though it does make us nervous. It is overwhelming. The death card is the dying way of the old self, the rebirth of the new. As we're heading into a new season of being and self, we, we're resistant. We're resistant to change. We're resistant to, you know, moving forward. So just being aware of that. And we won't, we won't even be aware that we're like, no, I don't want this. Or we're subconsciously rejecting it. And it can also be like, listen, 
I'm stressed out. Everything is overwhelming. Now you're telling me that I have to change or I have to, you know, juggle more plates or do more things. And I'm just keeping my head above water. So being aware of this during this time is going to be important to us so that we can step into our new season and not see it as, oh my gosh, now it's just one more thing I have to do, right? But to say to ourselves, no, things are changing. I'm moving forward. I need to remember to connect with my voice that the past isn't the definition of my present and that I have to stop judging myself. I have to get out of my own way. We are going to be very hypercritical about ourselves. We're going to have a hard time seeing our magic, our talents, the things that set us apart. So being aware of that is also going to be important. And then transformation. You know, we're resisting a transformation or we're having a hard time accepting the transformation. And it can be that we don't resist it. You know, when you go through awakenings, when you go through transformations, you'll have many of them. And it'll be like, oh, this is it. And you feel reborn and you feel empowered. And then you feel like you're back at square one. And it's like, oh man, you know, I thought I was done with this. And then it's like a yo-yo. You're yo-yoing back and forth and back and forth. And it can be frustrating for you. It can be frustrating for the people around you until you finally, finally step over that burden or step through that hurdle or step over that hurdle. And then it's like, you can feel the energy difference within yourself. And that's going to be important. It doesn't happen overnight. It isn't super easy peasy. You know, here's the secret, you know, sauce, the secret recipe. You've got this. You do have this. This is your life. Okay. And just to remind you of that, to plant your feet on the ground. This is your life. You are powerful. That's important. Okay. You're just not simply adrift in the sea. You're just not. So being aware of that is going to be important. So let's see what spirit has to say. And if you're interested in entering for a free reading, put a flower in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced on Sunday. It's always on Sunday, but hit the bell notification because you want to be notified when that announcement is made. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay, so we have blissful and devoted. Let's be devoted to our bliss. Let's be devoted during this time to being full of bliss. And it's also going to feel like I'm full of baloney, right? This is just malarkey. I don't know what's going on here. I'm I'm just trying to be whimsical and magical and oh, that's great, but this is real life. So there's that discouraging energy that's going to come forward and make you think, oh, you know, I, I have to be less of a fool. No, you're not a fool. You're not a fool, Capricorn. You are powerful, you are distinguished, and you are important. You are important because this is your life. Saturn energy is very, very strict. We can be very strict with ourselves, especially when we feel like things aren't going according to plan. It's like, well, I'll, I'll make a better plan. I'll make a stricter plan. I'll make a, a more, you know, to the, like, you know, to the point plan. So being aware of this during this time is going to be an important thing that we can't hyper schedule ourselves out of, out of our feelings. We just can't. And people around us can't do that either. It's not like, well, you've had this much time. Now it's time to move on. Now it's time to do this. Now it's time to do that. We need to see what we are devoted to. What is our spirit called to? And it doesn't matter if people don't get it. It doesn't matter if, you know, people think, oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, I love needlework and I love crocheting and I love embroidery and, you know, knitting. And those things, I was always like, oh, it's so like old people, <laughs> old people like that. And I don't want to be, you know, boring. I want to be exciting. But you also have to be what your soul is. Never going to, you know, skydive or, you know, bungee cord or anything like that. It's just too scary for me. And so embracing creating beautiful things you know, second by second, you know, skill by skill, that's extraordinary. And that is something that we need to embrace. It doesn't mean that you have to follow everybody else. It means that you have to step in to you, fill yourself with your bliss. I always think of Joseph Campbell whenever I see blissful and he said, follow your bliss. And that is a hard thing to do. It is something that we also think, oh, well, I have to then follow my bliss all the time. Well, then your bliss won't really be your bliss. It won't give you as much joy because now it's become your work. So here, just be mindful about that with blissful, filling your life with joy, not saying that it has to be every moment of every single day, but also have joy in what you do. But sometimes, again, on the other hand, sometimes a job is a job. It pays the bills. It keeps the, you know, it keeps the lights on and it keeps the tummy fed. So be kind to yourself is really what's important here. Be devoted to who you are and be devoted to filling the joy in your life. It moves us then to our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels 
and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides. This is soul's healing. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. Our, our soul is healing. Yes. Yes, it is. But just as we have that blockage with the death card, with the transformation of ourselves, we have this blockage with the healing of ourselves. It's almost like, no, no, I can get to a certain point, but I can't see it. I can't, you know, I can't embrace it. I can't understand it. The best way I can describe this is with own, my own personal parable. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I was reading the, the writer, Nina George, and she's, she's a German writer. And of course, I was reading it translated into English. But she wrote, she writes the most beautiful, beautiful books. And I was reading them. And it was recommended on, on some podcast. And I was like, oh, let me give them a shot. Because I love a good story. And her message was just so powerful. And it gave me such a release. But it was a release I didn't know I needed. But then my soul could heal. Then I could start to see myself or my soul could come to that completion. And sometimes our healing, our soul's healing is found in the most unbelievable, most kind of like, you know, out of left field ways. And so here with the soul's healing, don't think, oh, it has to look like this. It has to look like that. Embracing that we need healing, embracing our vibrational energy, embracing, you know, ourselves and our loves and, and who we are, that's going to be important. And it moves us then to our energy to be mindful of. But just also knowing with the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown, there's a blockage there. We're not connected with the universal energy the way that we, we want to be, our soul longs to be. So just seeing that golden energy flowing through us, flowing with us, that's going to be important. So our energy to be mindful of, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. Okay, so this is interesting. We have the Wheel of Fortune and the Eight of Wands. So we have the Wheel of Fortune here, blessing this whole entire reading. We're heading into, you know, a new sense of self, a new season of being. And we need to be mindful because we want everything to happen really, really fast. But when we're entering into a new season, it's that transitional slowness that happens. It's not like all of a sudden you're in the midst of winter, right? You have fall, you have the gradual change in temperature. It's just like with the with the daytime becoming longer or shorter. It, it happens gradually. It doesn't happen all at once. And yet with the eight of wands and the wheel of fortune, that's what we want. We want it to happen all at once. Or we think, oh my gosh, if I jump into this huge change, that's going to make everything better. No, it can give us a dopamine high. It can have us, you know, challenged for a little bit, but it won't, it won't be the lasting change that we need. So just be mindful about this because we as human beings, oh man, we, we love instant gratification. We do. So here with the page of swords, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Okay. If you're born in the cusp with Aquarius, if you have air sign energy in your chart, you're going to find this part of your personality bothers you. It's just going to be annoying. It's going to have you questioning things. It's going to have you looking at things differently, but it's also going to make you think, I don't need to learn. I already know. It's like that little kid that tells you, oh no, I'm a genius. And you're like, you can't read. Let's step back a minute. And they're like four. And they're like, no, I got this. Don't worry. I do it differently. <laughs> you're looking at them and you're like oh okay that's cool so here with the page of swords it's it's very much seeing yourself and saying where has my voice been cut off and especially from when you were little where was your voice cut off where were you not listened to who blamed you for something that wasn't your fault you know what happened it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be big we always think oh it has to be this big monumental thing it can be something very small but it had a very big impact on you. So being aware of that is going to be important. There's something from your past with the six of cups reversed that's going to come forward and it's going to make you feel small, all right? Doing the inner child meditation where you visualize yourself as the grown up you are now, you know, take a nice deep breath in, exhale whenever it feels comfortable for you and see yourself as the adult you are now holding your arms open to the child that you once were. And letting that kiddo run into your arms, swooping them up in the biggest hug and saying, I love you. I'm here for you. I will always listen to you. And I will always love you. Your voice matters. Sit with that energy. You know, rewind, replay, where it's like, I will always listen to you. I will always love you. Your voice matters. What does that mean to you? Because there's a point here, Capricorn, where your voice didn't matter and you were not listened to. And it's coming to trip you up, 
even though we think, oh, that's so silly. I should be over this. I'm, you know, how many years old? You know, the past is in the past. The past weaves together the tapestry of our present. And each thread is is vital. It is vital. And yet we think, oh, well, that's silly. I have to just keep on pushing. I have to keep on going. No, it's like I have to honor the picture that is me. I have to honor the complexity that is me. And I have to stop putting myself into a box and saying, you know, be like this. I have to stop being so judgmental to myself. So just know that during this time, we we are going to gravitate towards people who are judgmental to us because they're going to be mirroring our inner voice. It's like, oh, well, you're not doing well enough. I, you know, I knew it. I was just saying that to myself. So thank you for affirming it. Be careful of that energy, okay? During this time. With the King of Wands, be also mindful. And that's with the judgment card reverse. With the King of Wands reverse, be mindful of your temper. Be mindful of also being drawn to people who are super passionate. Super passionate, seem like a lot of fun, okay? But they burn hot and then they burn out. Or they burn hot and then they they rage. So just being aware of that is going to be an important thing. When it comes to your career, when it comes to what you want in life, like your your visions for yourself, okay, you can also be a bit discouraged during this time because it's taking longer than you had anticipated, right? With the with the wheel of fortune and the eight of wands in the be mindful cards, you know, it's like it's taken longer than you thought it would. So be mindful. Be mindful of things being intense. Be mindful of things being overwhelming. And, and wanting to move too fast and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I'm never going to achieve my dreams. I'm never going to get to the place that I want to be. And it brings us to the eight of, not the eight, it brings us to the death card. And the death card is the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new. Eight is actually the strength card. So that comes through for one reason or another. Just know that you're stronger than you think you are. And strength is not might equals right. And so here with the death card, it is transformation. It is stepping into a new phase of our life, but we're resisting it. We're resisting it because we're stuck in the past or we're stuck in judging ourselves and we're stuck in, in not seeing us and not feeling connected and not, and wanting, no, it's not, not, it's saying, but this is what I'm supposed to be. This is how I'm supposed to be. And I just wanted to be good enough for the once upon a time, for the time when I told, where I was told that I wasn't. I just want to be good enough. And we all battle with that. So just be aware of it. Our subconscious, oh, I love this one, manifest. Our subconscious spirit message is manifest. What are we manifesting? What are we bringing forward? What is our mind focusing on? So for better or for worse, right? We manifest. We manifest our fears. We manifest our joys. We manifest all the time because as above, so below. As you think it, so it becomes. So really be, be strict with your mind. And be strict with your thoughts, which can be very, very hard to do, very hard to do. And, you know, especially if we're in an anxiety time, especially if we're feeling overwhelmed. So just being aware of this is going to be important. It moves us then to our chakra energy, which is truth reverse. This is the throat chakra. We're not embracing our voice. We see that with the page of swords reverse, right? We're not embracing our voice and we need to. Humming, singing, chanting. That is absolutely fantastic for the throat chakra and also for the thyroid, which is a great thing. So here it's be truthful to yourself. It's not like tell the truth and nothing will ever go wrong. You can tell the truth and you know everything go wrong. So that, that's not a statement that spirit is making. It is say the truth to you. Know your truth. Know what's important to you and what isn't, how you need to move forward and what you're going after. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of, which is always a good one, the eight of swords. Subconsciously, we can be too much in our own head. We can be, you know, we can feel caged. We can just feel caged and not realize that the cage is opened, right? We're stuck in this cage. It's all we see. Our backs are turned to the door or the top is off. And we don't see that, you know, there there's a path right out of the swords, right? There's a path that she can walk, but because she's blindfolded, because her arms are, are tied behind her, she doesn't know it. And she was probably just told, I've put, you know, all these swords around you. If you move the wrong way, it's over. And that's what we think sometimes. Our minds can play trick on, tricks on us. And it's like, if I, I move the wrong way, if I do the wrong thing, it's all over. And it's stopping. It's stopping being so hard on yourself. And it's, it's letting yourself breathe. Okay, but get out of your own mind. Get out of your own way. It brings us then to the Ace of Wands. I love that. 
The Ace of Wands is God's source spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe handing you a gift of passion and creativity and fire and determination and focus. You take the gift because you do have the King of Wands, right? From the same deck, you have the King of Wands, but it's on pause. So subconsciously, you know your fire is supposed to be blazing. You know that things are supposed to be moving forward in a very distinguished, very powerful way. But because we have a bit of a temper right now and we're a bit frustrated and we're not seeing our magic and we're overly judgmental on ourselves, this is on pause. It's not saying that it's our fault. It's part of the story that we're living through right now within our lives and for ourselves. So being aware of this is going to be a very important thing. Okay. All right, Capricorn. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony. Capricorn, may blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.